just here filling up the propane tank, ready to take the fifth wheel out for a trip. So something I'm frequently asked is what are the supplies that we bring with us when we go camping? Some of the essentials, the things that you never want to leave behind, both for repair situations as well as just general prep. First I'll go over some of the things for the camper. I'll start here in the back. These rubber chocks right here, I actually purchased these from Northern Tools and I purchased the rope from Lowe's cut it into segments and attached it to the end. So that's what I use. I know they make several different types of tire chocks, including the kind that springs between the two tires, but this has always worked out well for me. They're very heavy and they're solid rubber, so they don't slide around at all. My sewer hose is a Rhino sewer hose. And at the drain point, I use one of these clear adapters that has a hose fitting right here. It gives me the ability to pump water back into the system and pull it out if there's some type of a clog. I do have a black water flush system on the RV itself, but this is a good backup. I highly recommend getting one of these valves right here as well. Basically, it goes at the end of your drain and you're able to close it off because sometimes you have water and waste material that's backed up in the system. And if you don't have this in place, when you get to where you're going, when you take the cap off, that water can break loose and flow out. It makes for a real messy situation. So this allows me to cap it off at the very end of the drain itself. I carry an adjustable water pressure regulator. It gives us the ability to make sure that the water pressure coming from the RV park isn't enough to damage our system. It allows us to regulate it down. We generally like to stay anywhere between 40 and 60 PSI. And then I have a two-way valve here with individual cutoffs as well as a water filter. Always remember to pack your coaxial cable in case you want to watch TV that's connected to cable. And in my driver's side basement storage I have a clean towel. Always throw a clean towel in there because you can get real sweaty while you're doing all the connections and hookups. I have my leveling blocks right here. If I had auto leveling I probably wouldn't need them but they still are nice to have just in case you want to put a plastic surface between the feet of your levelers and the ground. This box is what I keep all my sewer equipment in, the sewer hose, all my connections, fittings, including my gray and black water rinse hose. It's basically another water hose that I use to rinse out all my lines before I throw them in here. I keep an extra set of tire chocks. These are plastic tire chocks. And these are usually what I use at the storage facility for the RV. Going further, we have some tables and chairs. This is essentially all my little pieces and fittings and adapters and cables that I carry just in case I need them. So I have a converter here that allows me to convert from 50 amp to 30 amp in case we only have 30 amp available. I have a water purifier right here. You basically mix this in with your fresh water tank and it helps the water store better. I have a 30 amp surge protector as well so when we're connected to 30 amp if I need this it's actually a backup this is when we had our travel trailer I just kept it several other plugs I have a torque wrench as well as various cables adapters fittings things like that this is essentially my go-to bag in case I have problems then I have a box back here which is actually two boxes and that's where I keep all of my plumbing supplies Oftentimes, the biggest issue you'll have with a travel trailer, fifth wheel, RV, is the plumbing system. And it's always good to have extra fittings and adapters and parts that you can use to repair the system in case there's a problem. So I keep a bunch of extra plumbing parts in here as well. I also keep some extra plumbing pipe as well as adapters and fittings. Inside that Pelican case is some antenna equipment that I haven't put up yet. And it's basically booster equipment in case we go to an area where we need a higher gain signal and always keep a big roll of paper towels in the storage compartment. So now on the passenger side or the camping side of the RV, I wanted to show you some of the things we carry here. A lot of the things we carry here are more for maintenance, those types of things. I have some propane tanks here, some small ones for this little portable grill we bring with us. I have one that we already used yesterday. Carry a pest control sprayer, a bunch of different lubricants, gaskets, weather stripping, extension cords, bug spray, stuff like that. We carry this insecticide sprayer mainly because sometimes you're staying in areas where there's a lot of ants, there's a lot of spiders and bugs, and we like to spray around the base of our RV just in case. So I highly recommend that for people who are just getting into RVing, that they keep something like this inside of their RV, mainly because you don't want to end up in a place to where you're parked right on top of a fire ant pile and you really have no way of dealing with it. 
Haven't installed this yet. This is the Never Fail Suspension Upgrade from Lippert. It essentially replaces most of the components related to the leaf spring shackles and assemblies, so you're able to not have to worry about all the maintenance that you normally would have to put into them. On this one, you really don't have to grease anything. So once we put this in, um, I think it's going to be a great upgrade, and I'll do a video on that. I haven't put these away yet, but I do like to carry several different types of drill bits. I was using these earlier because I was running a cable jack through one of the walls inside, and I needed something to be able to do that for me. So it's always nice to have an assortment of different sizes of bits. I need to put these away. Where we're at now, we're able to actually light bonfires, so having something like a fire log can really help get that started. And then this is one of those accordion style ladders. This thing comes in super handy when you want to get on top of the side of the RV or on the slides. We have a ladder on the back of our RV, and this is kind of a carryover from our previous travel trailer, but it's always nice to have a good long ladder. This is actually a stroller we just keep in here. We keep it inside of the RV while we're camping, but we throw it in here when we're not using it. Bug spray. And I also have a box full of different chemicals as well as patch material, stuff that we might need in case we're in a situation where it's raining or we have damage and we need to seal it up, such as this stuff, which is an Eternabond tape. It's almost like a caulking tape. Works really well, sticks to anything, and will really seal up any areas that you may have a gap. This is weather stripping in here. It's real thick weather stripping, as well as this garage door seal material. Only keep that again in case there's some type of an emergency situation where I need to have some fix and I need some supplies for it. Then a bunch of different things from fix-a-flat to expandable foam to the slide loop protection, as well as the seal saver, which conditions the seals. Um, plastic dip, it's a rubber coat. It's kind of like an undercoating. Some white lithium grease. And this stuff right here, which is really awesome. This is called Kano. It is a weatherproof rust inhibitor, and this works exceptionally well. It's very hard to get a hold of, and you generally have to be a business to order it. Several extension cords and an extra outdoor LED light in case I need to add lighting somewhere. So in the front basement portion of our RV, we have a step stool right here, as well as some extra radiant bubble wrap. Basically material that's used to block any type of heat or sunlight from coming in. We have a case here that is loaded up with extra supplies from leveling blocks to hoses, tire covers. Um, we even have a brush back there that we used to sweep off the slides in case leaves or dust or debris get on them. have a lot of different things in here. I have a tire repair kit as well, and I also have a jack system on here that is essentially a wedge that you drive over and it pulls your rear axle off the ground, so you're able to change a tire if you need to. I always carry a tube of clear silicone just in case we need it for some reason for patching something. And this is the starter kit that came with the RV when we bought it. We never opened it because we already had pretty much all the supplies, so we use this kind of as an emergency backup. Now here's the box of stuff that I carry on the inside, and I have quite a few more things in the actual box from spare screws, different things. Anytime I install something and they have extra screws, nuts or bolts, I throw them inside of this little plastic bin right here. But for the most essential things I carry would be my impact driver, my screwdriver drill, um, several bits. I carry these screw removals, so if you ever strip out a bit and you need to get it out, you have a little kit like this, and this actually allows you to get a broken screw head out, scissors, electrical tape, a bunch of extra bulbs, little LED bulbs for different things. I really don't need these, but I carry them around anyways. Double-sided 3M tape, step bit, this is a pretty large one. Several different types of screws, from black screws that work on the inside to little brass trim screws more self-tapping screws, a good high quality set of wire crimps and cutters, silicone, RTV silicone, alcohol patches, more screws, basically anything that I might need to do a basic repair while we're out and we're away from other stuff. I can repair cabinetry, I can repair trim that might fall down, I can even install some things and this gives me the ability to do that. Actually on the golf cart I had to find out if one of the batteries was bad and it was nice to have a small multimeter with me just to make sure that one of the batteries was putting out the correct amount of voltage and it wasn't so I had to actually give it a charge. So everything comes in handy and it's good to just have all this stuff and all of this actually fits inside of this box with what's already in in there. Now when we travel, I load up a bunch of stuff inside of the toolbox of the truck, and this is one of the big reasons why I love having a full-size toolbox behind my truck. I have a little compartment full of different bits, bolts, nuts, different things I might need while we're out. I have a torque wrench, 
I have a two-step step ladder. I have a small fire extinguisher spray. I have my gooseneck ball. I have a rapid charger for battery, plus a household style tool set and then a mechanics tool set. I carry an extra set of windshield wiper blades, which can come in incredibly handy if you're out on the road. A lot of times it's not raining when you take off and you may not inspect the condition of your windshield wiper blades. So it's always nice to have a spare set of good quality blades when you're gonna be taken off on the road. I carry a bit set. And this is just a cheaper IOB bit set. I bought this one, I think, for about 30 bucks, but you can see one of my step bits in there as well. I carry a Vier 400 series air compressor. It comes with several different attachments and hose lengths to connect to dually tires and give you the ability to fill up pretty much any type of tire application you may have. This thing right here is super cool. This was actually a gift that was given to me a while back. It contains an interchangeable handle assembly that gives you a sledgehammer, a pickaxe, a shovel, and a regular axe, which can come in incredibly handy in different scenarios, especially if you're stuck on the beach or if you need to get out of a situation. Then we have another Hitachi drill set here. I have two power drills and an impact driver with three extra batteries in here plus a charger. And I have this HPJ 1700 high performance jump starter kit. So this thing is pretty phenomenal. It's 425 cranking amps, but I think it goes all the way up to like 1700. It's pretty amazing. I've used this several times to jumpstart other people's vehicles, to help if somebody's just had a low power and they can't pull in their slides, to jumpstart golf carts, all sorts of different things. This is a phenomenal jump starter. Got it on Amazon. And then this box here contains all of my towing supplies, like my tow cable, my winch blanket, as well as bungee cords, tie down straps, all sorts of things like that. When we're not camping, I take most of this stuff out. Pretty much what I keep in here would be like my mechanic set, my ball hitch, as well as my jump starter and this bag right here. Pretty much everything else comes out though. So here are the Saloon tires that we mounted uh, about a month ago and they have worked flawlessly. We've had no problems with it. It pulls perfectly fine. These tires are beasts and we got them in 235 80, 16, and we're very happy with them. You know, one thing I would like to say real quick is we got this really cool little base camp outdoor washing system. It's designed for washing your clothes. And I have to tell you that I do not really care for it. If you have a means of drying your clothes, it's great. But the drying cycle or basically a spin cycle that it has to wring out your clothes does not work very effectively. It shakes real bad. It just wants to make this thing hop all over the place and there's really no way of stabilizing it. The wash cycle, on the other hand, works pretty good. So when you put it in the wash cycle, it spins each way for about three seconds and spins the other way for about three seconds and it does that as long as you have the timer set and then to drain it you simply take this hose off put it in a sink and it drains the water out i know they sell these things on amazon and they're not that expensive i think they're around 100 bucks but for us it just doesn't work that well only because a lot of the places we stay at don't let you hang clothes out to dry and it could be windy to where it'll blow your clothes away and this really doesn't wring the clothes out enough to be acceptable they're still so wet that you can pull them out after being in there for 10 minutes of spinning and you can still wring out a significant amount of water just by wadding them up and squeezing so folks, I know that there's a lot of people that believe in the philosophy that lighter is better and that they don't want to pack a lot just because it's more stuff that they have to carry around and more weight. In our case, when it comes to emergency supplies, when it comes to just being prepared in case there's an emergency or some type of a disaster, that's really where we want to go a little overboard and pack a little more than we might actually need. Only because I like to do the repairs myself if I don't have to wait for roadside assistance or for someone to come by and assist. And that's really why I stock up with as much stuff as I can just in case we need it. There are a few things that I've missed. If I think of them, I'll compile a list and make them in another video. But for the most part, that's the supplies we carry. Anyways, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.